What up, Interverse? Happy New Year's. Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern-day Renaissance man. And today I want to say, first of all, Happy New Year's. I hope you guys had a great time, spend it with family and friends, and hopefully you didn't get too blasted. And if you did, I'm glad you're joining me here now <laughs> in your recovery time. But uh, today, I figured it's a probably appropriate time to talk about New Year's resolutions because let's face it there's a lot of people out there who are making those New Year's resolutions and what I wanted to talk about today is two main things first I want to talk about why do New Year's resolutions fail and then second what can you do as a modern-day Renaissance man to make sure that whatever goals that you set for the New Year don't fail because one of the biggest parts of being a modern day polymath is having the ability to set a goal and then reach that goal right the more achievements that we make like that throughout the year the more momentum we build and the more momentum we build in a purposeful direction that we've set for ourselves the, the the easier it will be for us to share our gift that we've been given with the rest of the world. So let's get right into it. Now, one of the most common. Hold on, let's back up. America. One of the biggest problems in America is obesity. So of course, one of the most common. New Year's resolutions that we have is to lose weight, right? How many people do you know that are in your office, in your family, in your group of friends who have told you in the last few weeks, this starting New Year's, I'm going to work out more and I'm going to eat less or something to that effect? Well, we're going to stick with that example because it's probably the most common and most easy to analyze. But there are tons of people out there who are making very similar goals. And even though they may not be related to losing weight, the, the root of the problem of their New Year's resolution is all the same. They're, they're the same across the board. So let's analyze this for a second. First of all, somewhat, so let me step back here. I am actually not a big proponent of New Year's resolutions. I believe that you should be able to set goals throughout the entire year because as we go throughout life we're constantly evolving the world is constantly changing providing new opportunities and challenges for us to attack so to to wait till one time of the year to set a goal for your entire life to me seems counterproductive and can really hinder your development. With that being said, New Year's is a really good time to sit down and kind of evaluate where you were the last year and where you're going this year. So don't get me wrong, it's it's still a good thing that there are people out there who are setting goals. What I don't want for you guys is to get trapped in in the mm, mindset that they're in and end up falling back into old bad habits. So the first thing that we see is that someone who is setting a goal for New Year's is setting themselves up really for failure. Why? Because if I say in September, you know, I realized I haven't been very good and I probably need to get back on the treadmill. I probably need to lose some weight. And I say, you know what, my New Year's resolution is going to be to get back on the treadmill. Well, what that does is it immediately is going to set a, psycholo like a, a psychological loop in your mind that every time you think throughout those next three months before New Year's, I want to go work out. I need to lose some weight. Because you don't take action right there and then, that day or the next day, what happens is, you then 
by the time you've gotten to New Year's, you've already developed a bad psychological habit where you say, you know what, I'm just going to wait until this date later on. So that when you get to New Year's, and by the way, here's a funny little aside. So those of us who go to the gym all the time, the regulars, we hate New Year's because what happens is there's this influx of tons of people who are on this weight loss kick and then they get in the gym they don't know how to use the equipment they're using they're they're going way overboard doing things that their body is either not capable of handling or hasn't grown accustomed to handling yet and within two weeks over 90 percent of them are gone why because they've already developed this bad habit one is setting things aside. Half of the people who have said in New Year's or for for my New Year's resolution I'm going to lose weight, they've their the bad habit that they've developed of putting things off until later will will prevent them from even going to the gym. So that weeds out almost half of everybody. And all they'll ever do is talk about it. And in their mind there's this loop constantly pushing things off until next week. It's like, "Oh, well, I drank on New Year's, so I'm not going to go today to the gym, so I'll just wait until tomorrow. And then tomorrow, it's like, well, t tomorrow's Friday, so I I'd rather start off the week going to the gym, so I'll do it on, on Monday. And so then they wait a couple more days. And then on Monday, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm not used to bringing my gym gear. There's always some sort of excuse. And then before you know it, weeks have gone by, months have gone by, and they still haven't gone to the gym. Now there's that other group that I told you about who do decide to go and they're all gung-ho about it and in the past I've been that person, I've been that guy <laughs> and they they get everything ready and they go and for like about a week they're they're probably the most um you know dedicated people in the gym I and mean, they're just going in there going at it and like I said a lot of them don't know what, how to use their equipment and all this other stuff, but the problem is because for the last few months or weeks they've been telling themselves that they want to work out, but they've been putting it off until this particular time frame, they put in all their energy for it, towards it. And after a week, a couple things happen. One, a lot of times they get injured because they don't know what the hell they're doing. And that can really then that can really set them back because they're like well you know maybe I'll just take a few days off and then a few days again like the first group leads to weeks months years the second thing that happens is after a week or two goes by they don't start to see the results that they want because see in their mind this psychological thing in their mind has been going on for months that they wanted to be in the gym getting better but because they weren't in the gym trying to get better they've put all the pressure on these two weeks or so, this two week time frame. And so since they're not seeing results, then what happens? Well, I, I just need a little bit of rest. I'm just gonna, they slowly fade away because they get discouraged, they get distracted, they start to fall into bad habits because they don't see the results that they wanted. So why didn't they see those results? Why are they failing? We have to figure that out so that we don't make those same mistakes. It's all about how they set up their goals, which is why today I want to talk to you about the three or four things that are really paramount to setting strong goals that you can constantly attain, achieve. So let's talk about those. The first thing is a lot of those people in in our example were setting a goal that wasn't really a goal. They were setting an action. Saying that you want to go to the gym or you want to eat less food is an action that you can do towards a goal, but is not the goal itself. The goal itself has to be something much more tangible, something that's quantifiable both by by time and mass, so to speak, particularly when you're trying to lose weight. But uh, so
so for example um, someone might say I want to pay I want to fit into a certain pair of jeans right well okay what size is that pair of jeans 34 inch waist we'll say okay you want to fit into a 34 inch waist by what time frame and this is very key you have to set a time frame to achieve your goal and that time frame has to be very realistic because if you set it for next year well guess what you've already failed because if the next time you're going to check on this goal is next year you, that's not something that you can evaluate and track and therefore throughout you have a whole year's worth of time you have 12 months to, to consistently fail and you're not tracking yourself the time frame I like to pick is right around a month to come back and look at things the most I'll ever push my time frames out to is about three months anything bigger than that then what you need to do is set mini markers and so what, what is a mini marker think about a race or a marathon they have little mini marker stations along the way to help you know that you're making progress right you can evaluate where you are in the race you can look at your watch and say okay it's been 15 minutes I still have another 15 minutes to go and I'm about halfway I'm making good progress or it's been 15 minutes and I'm only a third of the way I need to pick up the pace right that way you can sit down and be honest with yourself about where you are and reevaluate how you're gonna go about this attacking this this goal so setting time frame setting mini markers is a big big deal and if you don't do that you're not gonna have something where you can sit down and evaluate yourself and that's one of the most critical things to goal setting the uh, the next thing is and this goes this ties back into the whole genes scenario is setting a goal that you're excited about if someone told me you know by two months from now you need to be in a, or I want to be in a size 34 inch jeans or whatever that wouldn't excite me to me that's a superfluous goal or it's it's not superfluous it's um uh, superficial it's a superficial goal it's something that to me does not excite me it's not in my psyche it's it's not something that's important but for me if someone said by in two months I want you to try to be able to lift 515 pounds or something something that that would get me excited because for me that's the kind of goal that gets me excited and that's something that I could work, work towards and really track because it's it's congruent with who I am now this is where goals become very tailored to the person that they're there for you which is why a lot of times we see friends go out with the same goal we're all we're both gonna lose 10 pounds well 10 pounds to a dude who's who's like super overweight and 10 pounds to a dude who's super thin is gonna be completely different type of goal and one may be motivated more than the other to do that one it may be more more difficult than the other to do that which is why when you set your goals you have to set them for the person and they have to excite that person because that excitement that drive that energy is going to be what fuels the person to go after that goal day after day beyond all of their disappointments and distractions and everything else that comes up in life it's the thing that's going to keep them fueled and fired up ready to go after that goal so so when setting the goals it has to be something that that really gets you motivated and then the last thing I would say is that as you're going after these goals you have to leave a little bit of wiggle room for so that you're not too hard on yourself now I'm gonna give you an example last year when I started the year off I think I could lift roughly 405 pounds on my deadlift and I set a goal for myself that I wanted to lift 500 pounds by the new year but here's the problem in January to December that's too long of a time frame for me to track to 500 
so I set mini markers along the way. I think the first one was 415, then the next one was 435, then the next one was 455, and so on and so on. And so throughout the year, I would track myself. And it was, each goal was set for about a month to two months out. So every month, I would go back and say, okay, how close am I to hitting 425? How close am I to, or, you know, whatever the, the goal was at the time. How close am I to hitting that? How much time do I have before I've set for myself to hit that goal? What are the things that may be just distracting me from hitting that goal? And by the way, uh, some sometime early last month, um, I hit 500 pounds on my deadline. What? Crazy. So it was something that I was able to achieve, but because I broke it down. One, I set a goal that was super, like it was a massive goal. In my mind back then, lifting 500 pounds was, and even now, it's like pretty, it's, it just really excites me up to, to think that like, I could have the strength to do that. The second thing is, I set a time frame, and then I put mini markers so that I could evaluate and track my time frame. And by the way, about mid, midway through the year, I hit a bit of a plateau, and I had to sit down and really evaluate and ask myself, what am I doing that's preventing me to, to, to progressing more? And by the way, when I looked at it, what I found was I, I was, keeping my training too consistent and I needed to change things up and so I went with a lot of different methods for the rest of the year that really were really diversified from what I had stuck to for the first six months that had gotten me up to about 400 I think in 65 pounds 465 pounds and so it was like I totally changed my regimen because my body needed a shock. My body needed to change things a bit. So um, at one point I changed it. I'm getting into the minutia. That's a whole nother topic. But the point is you sit down and you reevaluate. And then the third thing is this. When I hit that plateau, I didn't get down on myself. I looked back and said, man, I've been making really great progress. What can I do to, to kind of, you know, change things up? But the point is, is if you don't set things that are quantifiable, if you don't set evaluation times, things, things where you can sit down and, and look at yourself and be honest with yourself, then you'll never, you'll never be able to make progress or break out of plateaus or st stagnancy. So, so anyways, those are my tips for creating goals. And then the last thing I'll leave you with is this. Today, if you haven't already, sit down and think, what are some major things that I'd like to accomplish? Anything more than three, it, any, what are some major things that I want to accomplish throughout the year? Anything more than three is probably too much. I would stick to one or two if it was me. And then have a third out there. If you were able to hit those first two, have a third out there for something that you can kind of work toward towards the end of the year. But what that's going to do, these, these have to be things that really excite you. Things that are like something that you've always wanted to do, always wanted to be. And then write them down and think of, break them down into, you know, months, weeks, days. What are the things that you can do to, to track your progress and, and do those things? And then every day when you wake up, in the morning and at night and even throughout the day marinate on those goals put leave them in your pocket put them around your office put them in your house tell your friends about them but sit down and have them always on your mind because what that's going to do is it's going to activate your um, RAS your reticular activation system which is a piece in your brain where basically once you focus on something your brain is going to kind of in the background on autopilot pick out pieces from real life things that are going on that are going to help you to achieve that goal sometimes it's going on in the subconscious sometimes it's here's an example um, you decide that you want to buy 
a new car and you choose a Lincoln Navigator well now every time you see someone driving a Lincoln Navigator or you see something related to a Lincoln Navigator it's immediately going to catch your attention because you've told your subconscious you've told your mind and the reticular activation system has gone into um, gone out into the world and started pulling all that information to help piece together the puzzle that you need in order to achieve that goal so the more you stay focused on that goal throughout the year like I said waking up in the morning and kind of meditating on what those goals are those those one to three really big juicy goals that you just love so much that you would you would just change your life if you could get them and then two um, you know at night doing the same thing and then going throughout the day and just kind of you know every so often reminding yourself what am I doing today that's getting me towards those goals and what you'll see is a whole change in the in your psyche in your attitude towards life in the people you're around and it's gonna make 2015 a great year so I think I've spoken for super long enough and hopefully this has been very helpful. I wish you guys all the best in the new year. And I know you're going to achieve those goals. And if you've got any that you'd like to feel, you'd like to share, go ahead and feel free and write them down in the comment section below. And, um, and actually, I'll give you one, other, one last tip before I go. This isn't a necessary thing. I've found that I can do these things. Uh, I've, many people can achieve goals with just what we've talked about. But if you want to add one icing to the layer of the cake, is find a few people who are going to keep you um, committed to that goal, keep you accountable to that goal. And, um, and then that can also really help. But anyways, I've spoken for a long time. I, I, I hope you can see that I'm super passionate about this. And I really want you guys to be able to achieve your goals. So anyways, until next time. Keep chasing after those dreams, keep fighting, and I wish you guys the best in New Year's. Take it easy.